Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. If you've been around the PFSense community long enough, you probably have heard of these changes that are coming to the PFSense Plus Home Lab. But in this video, we're not really going to be talking about that as I don't know a whole ton about it. We are going to do a video on OpenSense and how to get some VLANs created, as well as some networks and Wi-Fi networks using Ubiquity Gear and a Protectly box, which will be hosting our OpenSense. Now, quickly to go over this, it says today we are announcing that the Home Plus Lab version of PSN Plus, the commercial fork for the popular open source firewall PFSense is no longer available. The CE version you could still get, but I'm not too sure what the differences are because I don't use it. I think you may have to pay a subscription fee. If you do know, put it down in the comments below what the differences are and I will pin that message. Now, Tom over at Lawrence Systems did a live stream last night. It's about half hour discussing this. So I will link that down below and Tom is way more knowledgeable about PFSense than I am. But this is what we're going to do for the open sense. Let's take a look at the drawing. Here we have my internet connection coming in and then we have my Protectly box. And Protectly now does ship in Canada and the United States. I'll put links down to their gear below. From the open sense, we're going to have one cable going to my Unify switch and then another cable going to my Unify access point. We're going to have three different networks. So we're going to have my default, which is going to be for my open sense and all of my Ubiquity gear. Then we're going to have a staff VLAN on 192.168.11.1 on VLAN 11, and we'll have a guest on 192.168.12.1. The default will be able to access everything. The staff will only be able to go out to the internet as well as the guest. Now we're over at the OpenSense login, and this is just all defaulted. So the username will be root, and the password will be OpenSense. You can see at the top, I'm running in live CD mode, and that's because I'm doing some other testing with this Protectly box. So if you are running in live CD mode and you want to keep this in production, you might want to move where it's stored because once it power cycles, all the config would be wiped. Now this dashboard looks a lot nicer to me than PFSense. We can see our interfaces down below. We have my LAN, which is 192.168.1.1, and then we have my WAN, 192.168.10.54. But let's go ahead and create a user so that we're not using the root user. To create a new user, we're going to go over to system and then we're going to go to access. From access, we're going to click on users. We could see that we have the root, which is the system administrator, and we're going to hit this plus icon. The username I'm going to put is Mac Telecom, and then I'm just going to put in a password of test1234 for this video. We're going to put in all my information that's needed, and then we're going to put myself into the admin group and then press save. Now that we're signed in as Mac Telecom, we want to disable that root account. So we're going to go over to system. We're going to go to access and then users. We're going to click on the edit pencil on the root account and then we're going to disable it, scroll down, and then press save. Now that we have the root user disabled, we need to go ahead and create some VLANs. So if we go over to interfaces, click on other types, there will be the VLAN settings. Here we could hit the plus icon. If we hit the I icon over device, it just says leave empty to generate a device name. We're just going to leave it empty for now. Under the parent interface, we're going to have it go down that IGC0. This will be connected to our Ubiquity switch. The VLAN tag, this will be for our staff network, is 11. We're going to leave the VLAN priority as best effort, and then the description will be of staff. Now we have one more VLAN to create, and that's our guest VLAN. We'll hit the plus icon. We'll leave this blank. It will be the same parent interface. The VLAN tag this time will be 12 and we'll be calling it guest. We now have both of our VLANs created and it says device name of VLAN 01 and VLAN 02. We're gonna change that name to match the VLAN ID. So we have VLAN 011 and then we'll press save. And then we have VLAN 012. Once that's done, we need to make sure that we hit this apply button. Now that we've applied that, we need to make sure that we assign these VLANs. So we're gonna go over to the left-hand side and then we're going to click on interfaces and click on assignments. We only have two interfaces assigned currently. We have our LAN port, which will be connecting down to our Ubiquity switch. And then we have our WAN, which is going out to the internet. You can see that we have this new interface. And if we hit the drop down, we could see VLAN 11 and VLAN 12. I'm going to click on the staff VLAN, hit the plus icon, and then we're going to do the same for our guest network. 
and hit the plus and then save. Now, both of these VLANs need to be enabled and we need to set a static IP range for them. So we'll click on my staff network. We're gonna enable the interface and then we're gonna scroll down. We could see the staff, the device name. We could block private networks, but we'll do this all during firewall rules. And then our IPv4 configuration type, it's currently set to none, but we're gonna put that onto static IPv4. If we scroll down, we're gonna see the address. We go back to our OpenSense drawing, we're gonna see the staff is on 192.168.11.1 slash 24. So that's all we're gonna put under the IPv4. So 192.168.11.1, and then we're gonna switch this from a 30 to slash 24 and then press save. Now it's giving us a warning saying the staff configuration has changed and that we need to apply the changes. It's also saying, don't forget to adjust the DHCP range if needed after applying. So I'm gonna press apply changes. Now we need to do the same thing for our guest interface. So we'll click on guest and we're gonna enable it. And then we're gonna put it over to the IPv4 configuration of static IPv4, and then put in its IP address of 192.168.12.1 and then press save and apply changes. So that's great, our interfaces are now created, but we don't have any DHCP being handed out. So over on the side, we could see services and then DHCP v4. Once clicking on there, we could see all of our networks, so the guest, the LAN, and the staff. So let's click on the staff network. We're gonna want to enable DHCP for this network, and then we're gonna have a range going from 192.168.11.10 to 192.168.11.200. We're gonna put in our own DNS servers. I'll just do 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.4.4. Everything else we'll leave at default. We'll press save and we're probably gonna to have to press apply changes. Now that that one's done, we need to do the same thing for our guest network. So we'll click on the guest. We'll enable the DHCP server and we'll do the same thing. So 192.168.12.10 to 192.168.12.200. So we're actually getting an error here and it's probably because I didn't set my subnet mask right for my guest network. So I'm gonna go back to interfaces, click on guest and then scroll down. And you can see that I did it at a slash 32. We're gonna want that at a slash 24, save and then we'll apply those changes. We should now be able to go into the DHCP server and then add that range in. Okay, so now we could add that in 192.168.12.10 to 192.168.12.200, add our DNS once more, and then we're gonna save the changes. Now the next step for us is to get our Unify gear adopted into a controller. This controller is just sitting locally here on this PC, but you can see I have the USW Flex XG and the UAP InWall HD, so let's adopt both of those. Both of these devices are getting an IP out of my default network of 192.168.1.x. While those are waiting to adopt, we could get our VLANs in. So we'll go over to settings, we'll go to networks, and then we're gonna create a new virtual network. This virtual network is gonna be run by a third party gateway, which is our open sense, and I'll call it staff. The VLAN ID for staff is 11, and we're gonna press add. Now we need to get our guest network in there, so we'll call it guest and the VLAN ID will be 12. Now this is gonna be similar to any vendor that you're using. You need to make sure that the VLANs are going down to your switches and your access points. So now let's create a couple Wi-Fi networks. The name is just gonna be staff and the password will be test1234. This time, instead of the network of default, we're gonna choose staff, which is on VLAN ID of 11, and we're gonna add the Wi-Fi network. We're gonna do the same thing for our guest network. We're gonna create new, call it guest, Test one, two, three, four, and then the network will be our guest, and then we're gonna add the Wi-Fi network. Now with the Ubiquiti switches, if you've never used them before, every single port is a trunk port have all VLANs going down it. If you want to set a specific port for a specific VLAN, we need to change that in the software. We could click on the USW Flex XG, go to port manager, and then we could click on the port. Say on port three, we want this to be our staff. We're gonna click on the network, hit the drop down menu, click on staff and then press apply changes. I'm gonna connect my computer to that port three and then be on the staff network, but it still isn't gonna work for us because we haven't put in any firewall rules. So you can now see that my computer is connected. We are on port three. And if I bring up a command prompt, we could verify this. If I type in IP config, you could see I'm getting an IP of 192.168.11.11. .11. But if we try to ping out to the internet, say 1.1.1.1, it's going to fail. Within our OpenSense, we need to create a rule to allow us out to the internet. 
So let's go ahead and do that. In OpenSense, we could see our firewall rules on the left-hand side. We'll click on firewall, go to rules, and then we're gonna select the networks that we want to create the rules on. The first one will be staff. So there aren't any rules, it's just reject right now. So we're gonna wanna press the plus icon, which adds a firewall rule. These are gonna be very basic rules. We're just gonna go out to the internet and then we'll just block the inner VLAN communication between the guest and the staff. If you want me to go deeper in firewall rules for OpenSense, let me know. But first the action is gonna be to pass. The interface is gonna be staff, the direction will be in, and then the TCP IP version will be IPv4. The protocol we're gonna have is any, and then the source is gonna be any, destination will be any as well. And I'll just save for the description, staff to internet. We'll scroll down to the bottom and then we'll save and we're gonna to have to apply the changes. The next rule I'm gonna do is to block the staff from getting to the default network. If we hit on the plus icon and we add a new firewall rule, this time the action is gonna to be to block. We're gonna have the interface of staff, the direction in, same with the TCP IP version, as well as the protocol. This time the source, it's going to be from our staff network and the destination that we're gonna have is going to be the LAN network and that should allow us to not be able to get to the LAN. I'm gonna apply those changes and the same thing should be done on our guest network. We can create aliases to make our firewall rules a little less with the RFC 1918 private IP group. But for this video, this will be good enough. So we're still able to get out to the internet but we can't hit our default network. We do have to make sure that our blocking rule is on top though. So you can see here now that I have my staff net and it's blocked from getting to my land net. And then we're allowed to get out by the internet from this any any rule. So let's hop over to the staff network and make sure that we have internet access. We're now back on the staff network, but we'll confirm by going IP config and we could see that we're at 11.12. So I can ping out to Google. Let's go ping google.ca and you could see that I'm getting some replies. But if we look back at my Unify network controller, they do show that they're offline, but they really aren't. This is just because it's a local controller. But we did have a access point at 192.168.1.103. So let's bring up the command prompt and try to ping that. So ping 192.168.1.103. And you can see that we are now blocked from the default network. And that's going to be it for this video on OpenSense and it will get you the basic configuration done where you could have internet access as well as blocking rules for your inner VLAN routing. If you'd like to see more on this, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you're switching away from PFSense or if you're staying to PFSense, let me know what you're going to. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.